Hey folks, my name is Ravish and welcome back to another video in this series. So uh, today is day 4th and I hope your preparation is on track. Uh, I have uh, done two things uh, in the last two days and I'm making a collective video of both the days. So the first thing that we're going to discuss is design and implement build pipelines. So there are a few topics that you need to know in this. So let's discuss them directly. So first thing is you need to understand what exactly is a CI. CI means continuous integration. What exactly it is? Uh, what is the difference between CI and CD would be good if you know already. And uh, how does it uh, it relates to Azure DevOps? Okay. And in that continuous integration, uh, what exactly is a build pipeline or what exactly is a build process that you uh, need to know? Uh, there are multiple artifacts that you're going to create, right? So you need to know what exactly it is. All right. And after that, uh, we are going to discuss the publish process. So publish process is publishing using Visual Studio. So Visual Studio, you already know that is a Microsoft product and they uh, enforce a lot of uh, Visual Studio in this question, uh, in, in the questions that comes in AZ 400 and a lot of scenarios will come which will have visual studio we'll discuss we're going to discuss about the questions uh, later in a uh, in a few videos and this is not visual studio code this is proper visual studio the ide not the editor one after that the main part of this is build pipelines related to azure so which is azure pipelines in detail so uh, there are a few topics that you need to know creation and triggers and deletion so creation means how do you create them? Trigger says how do you trigger any pipeline? Deletion is again the deletion part. Agent, so there are two types of agent in that. Uh, one is hosted by Microsoft, this is Microsoft MS, and one is self-hosted. So MS is provided uh, the self, this when, whenever you see hosted by Microsoft, then these agents are basically a machine uh, or a group of machines that are provided by Microsoft and you have to pay for it. I think one or two is free for now, but uh, after that you have to pay for it. And there is a particular time period that you can use, for example, one hour or two hours or three hours uh, per day, per month, per week, something like that, that you need to know. These are the nitty gritties that you need to know. self host is something like that you have spun any VM, you have a machine and you have installed and configured it. Okay, so this is something that you do. I mean, this is your infra and this one is provided by Microsoft. Okay. And then how do you configure both of them? So this is uh, not much to be configured. Uh, the one which is provided by Microsoft, the one which you self host is a kind of a thing that you have to self host, like you have to install a lot of stuff, you have to run a few scripts and then connect it to the ADU. Okay. And post that you have to run the pipeline. Okay. So running the pipeline and uh, if you are using this one, uh, then you won't be able to see much of uh, logs in detail. But if you are using self hosted agent, you can go inside the VM, you can take a look at the logs and stuff, what exactly is happening. So uh, self hosted is preferred, but the problem is uh, it comes with a cost. That's all. Okay. Uh, and uh, as I was talking about, uh, so this is something known as the work folder. So work folder gets created inside this only self hosted agent. Okay. Uh, you cannot uh, create, uh, you cannot create a work folder in, uh, in, in, in any, any of these, but Microsoft agent who won't be able to see the work folder in the self hosted, you will be see, able to see the work folder. So whenever you run a pipeline, there is a folder that gets created and it has your all code and artifacts. So this is something like that. Okay. Then you'll talk about the, uh, uh, you have to learn about the unit test cases. Uh, you have to talk about the code coverage, uh, how to implement it. So, uh, what exactly is code coverage that, uh, if you have written, uh, four, uh, method, let's say four, uh, four APIs. Okay. Let's say, and then you are writing four unit test case and one for each is API. So then it means that your hundred percent code coverage is there. Otherwise, if you have written three over here, then 75%, something like that. So you have to understand more on that. What is code coverage? Okay. And then there is some classic editor in which you have to don't have to write YAML files. You have to write click, 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 and then you can create a pipeline. Okay. Again, uh, the code coverage part could be understood understood by Sonar Cube. Sonar Cube is a third party tool, not related to Microsoft, but you can club it with your pipelines and other uh, cloud version of it is known as Sonar Cloud. Okay. Then parallel jobs is something like that. Uh, two jobs are running at the same time and giving the result to one job, something like that. More detail you have to study. Uh, what exactly is pipeline caching? And again, the most important part in this is GitHub Actions. So GitHub Actions, how you can integrate, what exactly is a Git act action what do i understand by an action something like that do i have to write script for that something like that 
and after that configuring jenkins now you will see that configuring jenkins why because uh, jenkins is itself a tool and uh, why do i need it because i already have adu adu means azure devops so uh, the thing is that uh, azure devops has provided a few uh, a way to integrate jenkins with uh, with azure devops and that's the second topic which is this so uh, you can use azure repos so azure repos is place where you have your code okay if you are using github then it's another ball game altogether but if you are if your code is on azure repos you can connect it with jenkins as well so this integration you have to create a service connection for that you have to install it jenkins and you have to configure it inside a vm or or any place and then you have to connect it with adu and a lot of questions comes on this topic that uh, in which we they talk about a scenario in which uh, we have jenkins and then how do you integrate and if we integrate what what happens in this stage what happens in this stage okay so this is something that you need to know now let's dive into day 5 which is design and implement release pipelines okay so i'll just select another color now i'll select the green one perfect so you need to understand what is deployment or uh, even if it's cd you need to understand that and azure web app is one of the most uh, asked topic in this because uh, they give you scenarios in which they tell about uh, that okay i am going to deploy i am going to release a pipeline uh, create a release pipeline and i am going to deploy the artifact on a web app or i am going to create a web app so you need to know what is a uh, manual uh, how it is done how it is automated uh, what is the release process and after that uh, there you need to know what is a multi stage pipeline so multi stage pipeline is like a uh, stage when when you have stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 how the transition happens from stage 1 to stage 2 to stage 3 stage 4 and so on and so forth so this is multi stage pipelines you need to have a hands on on this i'll just make it star you need to have uh uh i'll just uh, remove this uh, you need to have a hands on on this so hands on okay so this is something that you need to no uh, make sure that you do everything hands on and then after that approvals and gate now approval approvals and gate why is it important whenever you release a pipeline you need an approval for example there are four people in your team and three people are junior resources who have put their code and uh, they have uh, triggered the pipeline but before going to the deployment uh, you need an approval for someone who is senior who knows whether your code is perfect or not and this can be applied to uh, any environment of dev stage qa or prod or prod not this prod this can be applied so most of the times uh, you see this approval or uh, you see this uh, gates in higher environments like production environment or staging environment you do not see it in dev or qa or something like that but you can put so this is something that you need to know okay and then gates is another thing in gates uh, you monitor alerts you query the work items you talk about azure policies uh, an example of a policy could be uh for example if you are putting some code in uh, azure repos okay so uh, there could be a policy branch policy something like this uh, that two people have to check the code otherwise the code would won't be merged okay something like that so you can uh, something like that you have to have policy so you need to understand that and after that you have deployment group so what exactly is a deployment group how do you set it up how do you configure it and what is the implementation of it uh, this is something that uh, completed today whatever topics i have written over here i have completed in the past two days uh, i have been preparing it for from a long time so do not worry about that you can take uh, at uh, you can go at your pace i mean it's not like you have to do every two topic three topic all these topics in one day okay so uh, and how do you deploy a azure web app, web app and this is good topic a very important topic as i said already and i'll reiterate that a lot of question comes on this okay so you need to know this and then the containers part so uh, this is a topic uh, which uh, was comparatively recently added to az 400 uh, and now they are going in detail like previously there were i faced around one or two questions on that but i have known uh, a lot of people who are saying that we get 3 to 5 questions in this containers part so there are two things docker image how do you build it how do you uh, what is a docker file how do you build the image i mean you not need not to know all of the docker but you need to have a basic understanding what exactly is a docker image and you have to have a prior knowledge of it it's not like that you are learning it now you can learn it now uh, but uh, if you have a prior knowledge then it would be very much beneficial for you there is no compulsion that you need to uh, 
know it pre, uh, like you have to have a prior knowledge but if you have then it would be very much be beneficial but you need to understand that before taking this exam you go through docker uh, basics and understand what exactly is an image how do we build it what's the docker file and how do we uh, write it okay and then the container deployment how do you deploy inside a container okay post that we have to touch acr which is azure container registry and you need to know how to implement it how to create an account how do you debug it how do you see the logs and stuff after that azure container instance i have not seen any question on azure uh, azure container instance but it can come so uh, don't take it lightly and the kubernetes uh, again same like docker you have to have a prior knowledge of it but if you are taking this exam in the month of february then you can go through kubernetes basics how the pipeline is deployed uh, for kubernetes what is the pipeline deployment in kubernetes okay uh, k8s is another way of writing it this it means again the same azure kubernetes okay and how release pipelines will deploy over here how does it happen how the orchestration happens okay again the next stop is how to publish the artifacts this is something every devops should, should know not just it, uh, in adio in general how to publish artifacts after that what exactly is a container job and this is kind of a extra knowledge what exactly is technical debt how it is measured how i can create uh, how do i what is the reason that technical debts get created how to resolve it and all of that all right so folks i hope you have understood it uh, so these are the topics that i have covered today uh, i've uh, studied myself i am on track right now my exam is on 4th of uh, november so i think there are four uh, five to six days right now it's on sunday and i'm on track right now all right so folks i hope you have understood everything if there is any question if there is any confusion regarding this feel free to comment below and we will address that so thanks guys and i'll see you in the next one